Hello, good evening, and welcome to Rise with Carol Gawker. Today is episode eight. As you can see from here, it says the Gockles instead of saying Carol Gawker. Reason being because I have this special gentleman here sitting next to me. This is my husband, Philip. Hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to hang out with us. Um, well, let me, for those who have just tuned in or for those people who don't know about me, uh, I'm Carol here, Carol Gawker. I'm married to this gentleman, Philip Gawker. And uh, I'm, a, I'm an author, speaker, change maker, confidence coach, visual marketer, and, uh, and a community leader. Um, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, today, um, I, I wanted to do something a bit different. For those who have been following, you know, you know that I have been, been interviewing female entrepreneurs. And uh, next week, next Sunday, is Father's Day. So I decided to have um, a special episode that I can interview the, the father of my children. I think quite a number of people are quite curious about my surname. When I first introduced myself, they're like, you know, um, how, how did you get that surname? And I say, well, it's my married name. And then people are a little bit, um, I would say, you know, a bit surprised and then, you know, a bit curious as well about the person that I'm married to. So hence, that's, that's what it is. And we also have a few uh, hellos from the people just saying hi. Hi, Victoria. <laughs> Hello. Okay, we have Carlos as well. <laughs> Hello. Hi, hi, Carlos. Okay, and we have Jack, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Yes. Yes, indeed, indeed, Carlos. Uh, yes, we are teaming up. So I hope you're having a good time as well. And then we also have Oliver. Hi, Ollie. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah. And then I say, wow, you smile so white today. Love is in the air. Yes, it is. It's not really I get to do this with my husband. Actually, he's quite a private person. And I'm very thankful that he's willing to come on tonight just to share a little bit, um, you know, about um, interracial marriage, about the challenges that we face as parents, and also what it's like to be, to be uh, a father. And um, people so, probably, probably not recognize me in the picture anymore. <laughs> that is quite true. After well. all the <laughs> lockdown. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because of circuit breaker lockdown, so my husband has uh, some facial hair. Like sexy to me, so uh, yeah, without further ado, no, that was with my hair. Oh, was it? it was yeah. my cousin's wedding. Oh, right. that's that's true. True. <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe perhaps for a start, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us a bit more about yourself. Introduce uh, yourself to the to the audience, and what's your story? Okay, so um, well, I'm 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 the I don't know if it's the better <laughs> half or the not the better half. <laughs> So Philip Gocke, originally I'm from Germany, so that obviously explains also Carol's uh, last name now. I don't even know, did you ever tell anyone that what it means? If people were to ask, yes, then why don't you explain? No, if people ask, people should ask. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, originally from Germany, Cologne, so that's my birth city, so that I grew up uh, pretty much out in the countryside, so not really a farm boy, but like a countryside boy, so I really enjoy nature. Uh, I mean, we do that also with the kids. That's why I'm always like they're pushing, getting out the kids, so they can get them out to do uh, tree climbing and uh, outside activities as much as possible, and not being confined in uh, any building, shopping malls, etc., indoor playgrounds, etc. They can always say something better to be outside. Um, so now I surpassed my 40s uh, last year, which was a bit of an adjustment for me. Not really midlife crisis, but still, I prefer the 30s. Um, and uh, now I've been in Singapore now, I'd say it's 10 years. Now it's 10 years. 11, actually. Is it even 11? Yeah. No, it was 2010, wasn't it? In 2009. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, the reason why I moved to Singapore, yeah, sitting next to me. So originally I came here as part of a project uh, with uh, one of my past employers um, and it was my first time, not the first time in Asia, I've been to it before, I've been in Japan, for example, but the first time in Singapore and then uh, it was my first Saturday night out 
had a nice place called Pump Room, which uh, I think right now, I mean, obviously right now it's anyway shut down, but I even I think before the lockdown it was already shut down. And uh, definitely not the nice band uh, Jive Talking doesn't perform there anymore. So that was uh, always a good place to go. So first Saturday night out ever being in Singapore and what happens? Okay, I meet my future wife. So, uh, yeah, and then I think the rest is just history. Right? So they think uh, now going uh, up like 10 years in the future, so like, like here we are, two kids, married, mm -hmm. um, living our lives here together. Yeah, this is, this is home for us right now. Right now. Right yes. now, indeed. So, um, you know. Home is always for me still. I mean, <laughs> sometimes it's like, I mean, I feel homey, of course, because that's where my family is. But also if I go home, I say that, I mean, we try to at least go back twice a year, back to Germany. And there I feel very home, like, like, but it's just because it's like, uh, I mean, obviously I grew up in that environment, so it's, yeah. like, it's a lot of nice memories, friends, family, of course. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, uh, you know, we, we promise you a, a conversation. So, you know, um, uh, we, we can't see who you, who's online, but if you have a question for us, you know, if you can put it in, onto the comments below, so we will be able to answer your questions towards the end of the of the of, of this stream. And so, you know, just a lot of people have actually asked me, like, have I actually set out to, to marry outside of my race? Um, I say I said no, but you know, have you have you actually known purposefully that you would marry someone outside of your race? Of course, always. <laughs> No, of course not. I don't. I don't know. Um, I think for me it was always it's like um, like like subconsciously I was always looking for like like uh, international marriage or these is that are like some 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 not just pure German and like it should have been more like, like there should be other uh, cultural aspects being in there. But if that is now to consider outside of race, it's like I mean okay, obviously it's like, like you are Asian. But if I would have said now, for example, I would have married in Italian or I would have married in Spanish or I would have married, uh, I don't know, French, is that considered out of race? I don't know. Probably not. Uh, if I would have married a Turkish lady, is like, would have that been considered out of race? I don't know. Maybe also not. Uh, probably depends. I mean, it probably depends on, on the background, right? It's like, like if I would have uh, married, um, if there would have been. Oh, that's completely correct. Oh, a black lady said, like, Germany was being totally German, and uh, we would have met and uh, it would have worked. Is that considered out of the race? I don't know. Mm, yes, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. okay, it's a different skin and tone. I said, yeah, okay, so yeah, so I, I wouldn't say so, like, it's really said that I think outside of the race was always for me the wow, okay, that's on my agenda, and that is definitely on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. Um. No, it's more, I think it was really more like, okay, I need, I need that international, I think that international flair because I always knew like I wanted to have kids and I wanted to have the kids to grow up into in a more international flair than just purely uh, German. Mm, okay. Well, as for me, um, it, it, it actually, it never occurred to me and it's just somehow just, it just happened. And uh, just to set the record straight, I wasn't very sure about dating you and I actually caught my father. <laughs> I caught my father. I really did. I caught. I caught that, and I caught. I asked him, you know, if it's okay for him that I go out with someone that is non-Chinese. And my father said, "Well, as long as you're happy and he makes you happy, then it's okay." But the first time I met a family, I totally impressed the father with my chopstick skills, which <laughs> where he said to her that actually my chopstick skills are better than hers. So, yeah. So what we can I do? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, what, what, what? I mean, do you? Is there any any like misconception you know, about me, being, you being married? You know, you being obviously white, Caucasian, and uh, being married to to an Asian lady. Is there any misconception surrounding? Uh, it could be. I mean, obviously, if we go back to Germany, I mean, it could be said that they go. I just ordered. Uh, Catalog number three hundred sixteen. <laughs> um, that that could happen. Um, I think here, then obviously, said so I need to live with the fact that oh, somebody else has just married another Thai Thai or SPG. 
uh, you could get that, but you get that more, I mean, from a certain group of people, but it's that they, they usually, of course, in my, in, in, or in our close relation, or the, 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 the friends we hang out with is that they care, which is less. I mean, people know that. I mean, we have a lot of mixed couples anyway as friends, so I think it's like uh, there, there it's uh, commonly understood. I think mean, there it is not a problem. Um, and of course, people like here get easily intimidated by me. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I mean, you keep telling me that it's like, like, I mean, even I speak normally, is that like, but the, the taxi uncle also is that they're like directly intimidated just because I'm white skinned. Okay, but uh, I'm not going to bite your head off or anything. So it's like I'm actually a very peaceful person. Yeah, this is something for you guys to. Even know, if I'm not on the rocky your, pitch. <laughs> from your opinion, well, it's hard because you know you are you are you are tall. You are big size. You know, you're one hundred and ninety six centimeters. And then when you speak, you are loud. I mean, you have to admit you are loud because when I scream at the kids, they don't really care. And then when you when you just like raise your voice a little bit and they kind of like start to quibble. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. true. What, what, would, what would you say? Is but have you ever been like, did you ever consider a great uh, marrying out of, outside of your race? No, I should say I never. That's, why, that's the reason why I caught that and asked if it's all right. Because what, what yeah, but it never crossed your mind. No, never. never. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think that it's different. I think it is, um, maybe it's also a bit of a cultural aspect. It's, that it, like, it's probably said that like, things that are like, maybe at least. Here, I think so. Maybe for the Chinese or Indians, I think maybe they try to stay more within their culture. I mean, I mean, obviously we need to be careful what we say, but it's like, uh, it, maybe it's just uh, for Westerners. Maybe there's more like, oh, you can marry outside of a uh, race. I mean, of course that doesn't count for all the rednecks and all the hilly bilis and etc. Okay, let me be a bit careful here. This will be on, <laughs> <laughs> on the internet forever, for permanent. Okay. Yeah. Well, for me, I guess it's like never really uh, thought about it from, from young. Because for me, being, being, being uh, Chinese Singaporean, we, I just grew up within my community. Um, mm. The, the only, only time that I get to interact outside of my own Chinese ethnicity would be in school, you know, because it's a co ed school. And then we, being, I would say, racially harmonious in Singapore, right? So we just actually make. So I, I, I have friends who are Malay, Indians, and all. But the, Somehow or other, you know, besides being in school, we don't really interact outside. We don't really interact. So it never really occurred to me. And also cultural-wise, I suppose. Because prior to that, I have no chance of meeting anyone like yourself. Caucasian, white, you know, of, of, of another country. I mean, that, that is true. I, mean, I, 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 I had this little joke with some of my friends. I'm actually like, uh, like a lien. You know, in, in Singapore term, Lian is someone who is actually very, very local, very hard learned, you know, <coughs> literally. So this is actually my, my whole, my, my, my upbringing. I have never studied overseas, so I have no experience being able to meet people outside of my country growing up. Okay, maybe, maybe Malaysia, maybe Malaysia, my mom. And, and that's, that's probably it. And so it never, and you know, my, my very first interaction with the in international environment would be when I started working with, uh, in 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 Credit Suisse first first Boston. Yeah, that was actually a project. So my, my first interaction was was with um with Brits as well as Americans. So then that was an eye opener and I have to really learn how to 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 uh, to get along because being Asian um I was told you, you speak only when you're spoken to so you can't be outspoken. But with with a group of all these people who are very outspoken in a completely different culture, I have to learn really, really fast. And then that, that kind of like shaped me differently. So I, I guess that was the reason why I would be able to interact with you. But then other than that, if I didn't have the opportunity working in an international environment, I guess we would, our paths would never have crossed. Ever. I mean, ever. I must admit I was also very persistent. <laughs> that is quite true. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I, I don't think I've ever really asked you this. What would you say it's your biggest challenge that you face being being a father and and why? Biggest challenge for being a father being a father is it's probably trying to do it all right. 
and I mean, I'm, I'm aware that of course I, I'm not able to do it right every time. Uh, I mean, there is these moments like, I mean, we keep telling our kids, so I said, like, really, we are not really, I mean, we're not their best friends. We are, I mean, we want to have a close relationship with them, but it's also they need to understand also that we're obviously with their father and mother. Mm -hmm. So, and the, on the one way is that they can try to educate them, but then on the other way is that you are wondering why I'm not too harsh with them. Uh, you mentioned the yelling, and then you do the yelling, and then afterwards you know, take, uh, you look at them, and you're like, "Oh God!" Uh, so that's probably I, I feel it's like my my biggest challenge is that I think with the kids is that I get to or to to also to stand up to my standards of how to raise the kids. Um, I enjoyed a very nice childhood. I can definitely say that. It's like I was. Well, in Kiev, I had a lot of opportunities to see a lot of different countries, uh, you know, exposed to different cultures. So and that is what I want to have for our kids as well. And we don't want to just uh, tingle from one holiday resort to the other. It's that like, no, if we go to a country, we want to absorb the country, we want to absorb the culture, and we want to really make sure that like, our kids absorb that as well, and really take that learning and learn about something new about culture. Um, I mean, the one thing is, of course, always is like, I mean, me uh, being German is a certain hit part of history in my life, which uh, is not that great. Um, and uh, I think it's just important for me is that I like to be very well educated about it. And it helped me in a lot of situations to be educated about it because I could easily argue with other people as that I like, can uh, argue uh, like, like the, the nonsense out of it. Um, and that is for me, of course, the same. It's like the kids have to be aware of their heritage, mm -hmm. um, even though they're not responsible for it, but they need to be understanding, okay, what happened, and uh, why it happened, and why it should not happen again, and um, how to argue and find the right causes for, for the, uh, with other people. And, um, and now I think it's like, because we talked about it also the other day, it's like actually it has a, now it's like because they come from mixed marriage, like for me being grown up in Europe, everything, I mean, that chapter, like around the Second World where everything was about the the West, mm. and you hardly talked about what's happening in the Pacific. So now, is that like, like the kids also need to learn the other side as well? They need to understand, okay, what actually happened in Singapore, what happened with the Japanese invading Singapore, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they they actually get both sides of the I mean, both sides of the story, but they really get to learn both ends uh, in, in from a geographic point of view. So. I think it's just uh, yeah, that's like the two to make sure that also they they, they grow, they flourish, they, they perform well. I mean, they, they have fun in what they do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. Is there what would be what would you say would be the biggest challenge that you face in dating me and in our marriage? Uh, well, the distance. The distance. The distance while while being dating. I mean, we dated for uh, one and a half years, long distance, mm -hmm. literally yeah. long distance. I mean, it's uh, twelve thousand k's. So <clears throat> it's not just uh, the next city or anything or the next state. Um, so that was, I think, the biggest struggle. Then obviously the time zone added up to it. So either it was for me in the mornings and it was you in the evening. Uh, to be on Skype, and uh, I mean, luckily back then already Skype existed, but we didn't have WhatsApp. Uh, uh, phone calls costed a fortune, and uh, maybe I should have kept the copies of the bills from back then, <laughs> but uh, luckily I didn't. It's probably going to give me a heart attack now these days. <laughs> it was, I mean, that was one for probably about like a few hundred euros oh, you mentioned. Yeah, every month. So. Yeah. So I think that was the biggest challenge, and then it's. Uh, because of the distance, it was my fear to lose you. So are you could... saying you are, afraid, you are not afraid of losing me now? No. <laughs> okay, sorry, continue. <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't, why, why should I? Should I? No. Ah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we have a few um, questions that come in. Okay, there's one from Jacqueline. Jacqueline says, Germans are known to be regimented and systematic. Is that true? Uh, yes, you can say that. I mean, yeah, stereotyping definitely it is. I mean, uh, 
Uh, I also prefer that. It's like, like if uh, everything usually at home needs to have a certain spot, and uh, I get irritated if uh, we come home and Carol does not hang up her keys. <laughs> so that gets me really irritated. Um, so yeah, definitely. I think. I mean, not not everything through. Said like, I think said like in certain ways, I'm a little more relaxed probably than the typical German stereotype, but uh, definitely, I mean, it's like, like I, I prefer to have certain structure in uh, my documents uh, and everywhere now. Sure. And we also have another question that comes in from Kaming. Kaming Kam say, is it a challenge to decide for, the, for children, for our children, you know, to, what, what language for our children to, children to learn? Well, should, we, should we wake them up and ask? <laughs> no, it, yeah, it, it wasn't. I mean, um, they probably have to learn more than a typical local kid, you know, English and other tongue. Our kids uh, actually have to learn three languages. Yeah, but then the local kids also, I, mean, I think it's a lot of times that people disregard that they learn a dialect as well. Mm -hmm. So okay. if you learn, whether you learn Hokkien or Fuchao, is like in, for you, is that a, yeah. it's a different language as well? It is. <coughs> I mean, for, 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 for local Chinese kids. So that's, that's what it is. But, um, I remember you once said that you would divorce me. That you were very, very adamant. You say I would divorce you if you ever were to cane the kids. You see, let me just explain a little bit because um, growing up, I get cane. It's like you know, your parents run around with cane. Like if you dis you if you misbehave, you just you get wet on the hair on the buttocks. And I say that sometimes you need this kind of corporal discipline in order to get the message across so this is how i was brought up and you know so for me i, I didn't feel any any difference to, be, to 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 use that of course we do you i, I believe you probably feel that it's um, kind of like borderline abuse what 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 is your take on that well i meant what i said so i, mean, <laughs> I uh, do not Tolerate that. So, like, I think it's uh, actually a sign of weakness. It's like if you beat kids because they obviously are so much stronger than an adult. I mean, not that it hasn't crossed my mind. I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. But it's like, like I keep uh, stopping myself. Okay, we give a smack on the butt or something. So, like, like, I think it's uh, I think it's a different thing. But to reply like beating violence, but I think that a canning actually goes in that direction. I think it's uh, not appropriate. And I remember when you told me said like when uh, the kids went to our our daughter went to school. He told me like we had to actually sign that paper, paper that we are okay if the disciplinary. And there, I mean, there are some disciplinary measures that have to be taken. The disciplinary yeah. master will can them. Yes. Or can them. And uh, I was like, okay. I mean, they, oh, we had no other chance. Otherwise, the kids can't go to school. But for for I mean, for criminals, I think it's a fantastic <laughs> way of doing it. See, um, standard here. No, because. I mean, the kids are not criminals. <laughs> well, they were. They Within were. the house pools, yes, okay, but yeah. it's like a totally different thing. Okay. I think that's a bit. Um, <laughs> I think also that I like the, 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 the what person asking about the, the languages, the things like they put, you can also tell them it's like, um, we were concerned about the, or I was definitely, I don't know if you were, but I was a bit concerned, okay, can, how, how can they cope with all the languages? I mean, now there's speak three languages, yeah. and I think they all speak all of them quite well. Mm -hmm. um, but I learned from pediatricians is like a um, lot of problems like they can actually easily absorb up to four. Mm. Uh, what it is is like up to the age of nine, it's very easy. Afterwards, it gets more difficult for them. Well, yeah. more challenging. I mean, not as exactly drastically, but it's like it gets more challenging. This. Um, and the thing is, of course, what we always said is like I speak with them German all the time, except now for some types of homework. Uh, we have to admit sometimes now I speak with them English because the conversation is just getting a little bit more complex. So then it's uh, obviously I want Carol to follow as well. So then it gets uh, yeah. so then we switch to English. Um, well, actually, very minimal. Very little, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the fact that it's like even me said, like, okay, at the beginning they didn't have to in English. You know, I remember it's like the one of them was I think it was our uh, daughter. She was standing in front of me and said, like, "I'll bow." And I'm like, what do you want? I have no idea what you want from me. <laughs> yeah, Baba in Chinese for like, just call me. Yeah. So I learned this, and but now she wouldn't say that. Now she actually says that, like, okay, carry me. Yeah. I mean, she now she would uh, tell her being German. So I think that's uh, 
the, the, the adjustment you need to go through with the language is like you need to just push through it, just continue with it, otherwise they will not ever adopt. Sure. So we have a question from Victoria. She said, Carol asked her dad for permission to date you, Philip. What about you? How did your parents react when you started dating Carol, an Asian? Mm, that's a very good one. Thank you, Victoria. So first, I asked her dad for permission to, I mean, uh, not, not to date, but uh, to, to, to marry. Yeah, well, for date. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, to date, it's like, um, I mean, I didn't ask my parents for permission, no. Um, I mean, for dating, it's a bit uh, odd. I mean, at least for our, for, for my culture. I mean, um, I would say, say, okay, for marriage, it's a different thing. I think that's a lot of respect. Um, uh, my parents were all good with it. I mean, my parents are very open-minded people and uh, have multicultural friends, so there was no concern at all. It's like we have always had a very open household for other thinkers and uh, my parents are not happy to, to, to have an argument with them or to do a discussion, even an argument, a discussion. So, no, I think there was never a concern, yeah. never ever. Yeah. I mean, I remember it's like there was this one, I think it was one of the first dinners we had with my parents. Yeah. And then uh, both Carol and my mom were equally nervous. <laughs> okay, so and, uh, and then I remember I said that Carol was telling my mom, say, okay, uh, Latina, I help you with the dishes. I was carrying the dishes, and my father was sitting there. And... I so the so the I was okay. Seems to be okay. Yeah, well, I, I did remember that uh, when, when you when you broke the news to your mom that you are you are dating an Asian girl. Yeah, and then I remember she asked you the question. Yeah, and then you you told me that you don't remember because you are you are quite forgetful. Uh, she asked, you know, how how would our children look like? Do hmm. you remember that? No, I don't. Yeah. And then when you asked me, I was like, hmm, yeah, I mean, there's actually a bit of a cause for concern. And I, I was, so I, I actually found, thankfully in Singapore, because of, of, um, of we have a lot of mixed um, children, mixed marriage, inter interracial marriages. So I was able to find a picture of a local celebrity who is, who, is, who is half Chinese and half German, Denise Keller, and I sent her picture to him. So I said, well, this may be... So my mom asked me or I asked, asked you? Him? Asked you, and then you asked me, and I said, okay, maybe to give her a visual. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. this, and, and I did, I sent her. And sent I, remember, you and I, I remember I was always wondering, how does my mom feel once she has the grandchildren? Mm -hmm. Because they look mixed. Yeah. So how does it make her feel? And I actually asked her the question, she said, like, that wouldn't make any difference for her at all. There yeah. would be absolutely no difference because they're grandchildren and whether they're black, white, yellow, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm, they're kids, yeah. But it was actually quite interesting. You know, there, was an op there was a time when we, when we were living in Germany and then we, we, we get mama to help us to babysit. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then when she, when she pushed the, the I want to say keep the bargain. <laughs> when, she, when she pushed the, the, the stroller out in the village, and then somebody actually stopped her and said, Oh, this is your grandchild. And then she looks very Asian. Okay. And then that was usually the, 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 the comment. But I don't think Mama actually felt anything different. She would just explain away. And it's the same thing, you know, when my mom, when my parents are out with, with our kids, and then the, the, the people will be curious and then ask, you know, are, are, are your grandkids mixed? So some, you know, might be looking at them in a weird way. Most of the time, most of the Thai people would say, oh, you know, they, they, they kind of look interesting because they are mixed. Yeah. I think, I mean, in, in, especially in Germany, it really depends where you are. Mm. Uh, probably in a city like Berlin or also in Cologne, it would, you would recognize it less. Obviously, a little bit where I grew up in the more countryside, it's a little bit different. Yeah. I remember like a friend of... I know a friend of ours, and I think Sasha, so they think, uh, yeah. was married to a Japanese, and they went to a, a village, like really a bit more of a village, and uh, the Eifel, which is a bit like a mountain area. And then um, he told me that story. They were walking through it, and then there's some people uh, in the background said, like, "Oh, look, this is how they look, the Asians." <laughs> so, because uh, they have only seen them on TV, or so maybe never in their lives. So you can understand. Uh, there's another good friend of ours, Oliver, so they was. Mm. Also married to uh, Chinese original. Now she has a German passport, but um, 
also where they used to live, uh, they got some, I mean, also a small village, and then they got some more attention. Mm. But uh, you, get, you get the attention if you're in Cologne because you look beautiful. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> okay. <Great brownie point. laughs> okay, we have a comment from, uh, from Vina. Vina said, being half German and half Asian myself, I consider myself very lucky having been brought up biracial. Yeah. Very true. Yes. And then she also said, <laughs> if kids grow up with many languages, it won't be di difficult at all. And she just said, ah, because he has to try to score brownie points with me. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what do you say you have to change uh, in your, it, it, for, for yourself in order to integrate to the lifestyle here in Singapore? My wardrobe. <laughs> Couldn't bring any of my winter wear home. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Which I find sometimes, I mean, maybe it sounds a bit, I don't know. Um, because I find that like you have, in Germany, so you, because of the climate, you have more options. You can play a little bit around more with, with your clothes. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, lifestyle wise, of course, it's like uh, just getting used to the constant fact that you're always perspiring, uh, no matter what you do. So unless you're in a shopping mall where they set the aircon to 80, 18 degrees, the same as in the office. So there you freeze and then you need to wear no jacket. <laughs> um, that difference. So you would you would not in a in a German office you would not freeze in the summer because they usually don't have air conditioning. You would just actually sweat your ass off. You know the paper is like stuck all in the paper on your arms. And so once we got air conditioning in our offices, sometimes wow, it was like, hmm, that's, that's a novelty. Um, the lifestyle, I think it's, uh, I, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, like I enjoy the, the, the nature activities and that's something, yes, you can be out in the nature, but you, it's not the same as in like, you cannot just walk to the woods. I mean, you can actually literally just go into the woods I and mean, you could do that here, but it's like all jungle and just because of the humidity, and then if you were like long outfits or so, so I mean, again, it's just uh, spiral like hell. Mm -hmm. So I remember sometimes when we went with the kids, like we just go into the into the woods, and then they just uh, they, there's this bit of a drizzle, and we just put a raincoat on, and it's still warm. But if you put a raincoat on, it doesn't matter. You do not really sweat. But if you do that here, I mean, obviously, it's like you wouldn't survive. And so you just, uh, unless you constantly drink like three liters of water, you know. Um, so that was one thing I had to get uh, used to. Um, the speed, I think, it's like everything is faster. Where I would not say it's more efficient. I mean, it's efficient definitely. I mean, public transport and everything. But uh, I, I think it's like there is a certain level of um, hyper activities. Like I, I think there's a, a certain level of speed which is not necessary. Which is like uh, something you do not have as much. Uh, I mean, in Europe, I mean, okay, if you go to 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 Rome or so in the streets, it's, of course, and it's like uh, the traffic is a nightmare, and it's also busy. Um, but this this yeah, and driving, yeah, absolutely, driving is like a nightmare. It's a, yeah, it is a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, it's not in the public. Yeah, I I drive and I curse at some uh, some bad drivers too myself. But the thing is, like you know, I think um, a lot of people ask us, ask me, or rather not ask, but just ask me about you know how, how how do we raise our kids? Because obviously, you know, we have two different upbringings, two different backgrounds. And if if I may say that you grow up in the countryside, and I'm I'm a city girl, mm -hmm. and then you know different experiences, and then the kids actually they do have different different sets of uh, you know, different different two different cultures, right? And then. What 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 would be? How would I say? You know, do do you think have, have you ever thought that that would be actually a problem at all for us having? Because I I would definitely you know would raise them based on what I'm, I'm what I know, right? You know, the being being the being the Asian the Chinese part of me, and then you would want to instill your beliefs, um, and the the, the culture. Right, and then and of course you know the upbringing, like being outdoor for me, being a city girl. So, have you thought that that would be an issue for us? Not an issue, no. I mean, but I, I can, I can, 
see that there is a yeah sometimes a bit of a different perspective as in I think it's easier if you live on the countryside. I mean, it's not like, like I, I, I took a tractor to work or right? something. <laughs> <laughs> we still have cars and we have bus lines and we have trains and everything. So, yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's the outskirts of the big city. Um, but, uh, uh, so now that's my train of thought. But um, I think it's easier for me to live in a Big city, a cosmopolitan city, then the other way around. I think it, it, it requires, it takes you more to adapt to that environment. Because all of a sudden, it's like it goes from up to here, everything happening to nothing is happening. So it can be very quiet. And uh, I really enjoy that. It's like, like, I mean, the quietness. It's like if we go home and then we, the mom and papa say, like, we sit on the porch and uh, I just see a bird chirping. Love it. And that was a good thing about the lockdown, so like no, no traffic on ECP. That yeah. was, it's like, like you could hear, like you stand on the balcony and you just hear the crickets chirping. So like, yeah. wow, it's like, uh, I don't know, the crickets chirp. It's probably birds. <laughs> yeah. Crickets make sound. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, that, that, was, that was very relaxing. Mm, that so is that true. is, so like, like to have a bit of a, a uh, spot you can fall back on and just uh, recharge and uh, unwind. And you, if, you, if you guys have any questions to ask us, please feel free to put into the comments box below. One and only show. Uh, option. <laughs> One only option. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, people do call me uh, an SPG, a Sarong Party Girl. I never heard that. I never seen that. Of course, they won't say it, you know, it's like you married an SPG. They, 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 they won't say that in your face, but you know, they would, they would say, I think some oh. Said that they were talking to you. Exactly, yeah. you know, ladies. I don't know. They well, probably, you were not there, that's why I talked to the ladies. Yeah, so, so, you know, being a salon party girl. And then, you know, in, 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 in local terms, salon party girl is a, a very derogative uh, term, you know, that, that for, to describe women. Uh, Asian women <coughs> in particular who fake an accent or to will only be date white men who would worship white supremacy. So literally they are they are they are not being viewed in, in a very good light. So and also probably go digger, you know, as add into the mix. And then when people brand that on me, how does that make you feel? I try to, we have a saying in German, I don't know if you see the same thing in English, like I try to, to reach into a naked man's pocket or something. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, so it means if you have no money, you have no money, so if you can't <laughs> dig for any gold, right? Um, one point interesting was you said the language, and I think that was also one of the reasons, it just reminded me about, mm -hmm. again, I think if you would have spoken truly Singlish the whole time, mm -hmm. um, I would have had a bit of more, more reservations. So it was it was important for me to really go to that you can that you speak proper English. Yes. And we have to thank my English teacher for yes. really forcing us thank to you, Miss <laughs> Mrs. Well, Go. Mrs. Mrs. Go. Mrs. Go. Thank you. I don't know where, where you are, but thank you for really pushing us and correcting my pronunciation when I was in school. What would what would you say is the greatest fear as a husband? Um, probably great fear as a husband and also as a father is that they're not being able to provide for my family. That is uh, my greatest fear. So I would uh, give 200 or more percent just in order to be able to provide for the family. Um, I try to, probably it's like a, a little bit too much sometimes that I like try to, okay, be there for the family and to provide for the family. So um, sometimes I think I should actually uh, be a little bit more selfish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's like uh, yeah. Right now there's right now there's not much room for being selfish. It's like, like uh, the other day when I realized it's like, like that we have been now here together with the kids for I mean literally three months. Uh, yeah, three months when Mama was here. Yeah. yeah. 
So that, I think that is uh, the, the the biggest fear. So, um, also, as a husband, is that I think that not being not not being able to be there for you, also in a situation of uh, need. I mean, that's why probably also a very German thing, so that like having insurance is for everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have insurance for everything, but it's that like they, Germans like to be insured. <laughs> um, so just making sure, okay, so that like uh, if something happens to me, that there's uh, financial coverage or that uh, stuff is uh, organized and there is support there. That's that's my biggest fear as a husband, yeah. That you are on your own with the kids and uh, all of a sudden it's like the like, uh, old world is uh, collapsing on you. If you are not here, my world will collapse too. So. Oh, no, you collect it all. Well, I'm <laughs> telling you the truth. I mean, as 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 a wife, mm. but my my biggest fear is that we are we are not together. That um, okay. I don't want to tell now, but yeah, that um, the family is apart, and I I don't know what to do if I were to lose you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We have a question from uh, Anita. Anita is saying, what are your plans for the future? Continue to stay in Singapore or go back to Germany? Where is Anita from? The Northern main reads very German. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know. To be honest, it's uh, quite open. I mean, there uh, were discussions, they go to job-wise actually to move to the US, but that was more, for example, uh, last year or also like somewhere else in Europe, but um, I think we're very open actually to, to mm. I mean, there's definitely a lot of, oh, not a lot of times, but it crosses my mind, it's like, you oh, I wouldn't mind living in Germany again, but then it's also the other fact that it's like, uh, the kids talk a lot about it, it's like, oh, I want to go to Germany, I want to go to school in Germany, so like, yeah, but it's not like uh, school, uh, no, not like vacation every time, if you yeah. need to wake up in the summer, in the winter at the, uh, 6 30 in the morning or 6 uh, and it's cold outside it rains it's dark um it's a different story than oh yeah you sleep in a little bit grandma and grandpa prepare the breakfast they come you come down watch a little bit of uh, kinder uh, like uh, the uh, children's cartoons, tv cartoons yeah. first then you have breakfast nice have a nice chocolate warmed up by grandma so it's a different story of course but if they all need to do it themselves and uh, yeah it's cold and etc the, the weather is a big part for me to not go back. I think it's like if the weather would be more stable, I think there would be more reasons for me to want me also to go back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're in love with the, with the weather here and... Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Not all the time with the weather because I also prefer that, like, I mean, from the, I find it good that in the winter that like, we have a couple of weeks like really yeah. snow. Yeah. But then it's good to have a really winter, not like a stormy rain wet winter which is more common in Cologne. Mm -hmm. That's where he's, he's from. Yeah. So what's your wish for this Father's Day? Having some digital drinks with the boys. <laughs> okay so one final question before we end this uh, live stream. The show is called Rise with Carol Cocker. Mm -hmm. What does rice mean to you? All of a sudden, you come so close. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, I mean, I really uh, uh, connected with your story about, um, her story about, um, she wrote in the books that are like rising from the ashes. I mean, obviously, I knew, of course, it's like about the past, but it's like they, to have the guts to share this publicly. Yeah. Publicly, uh, publicly. Um, yeah, take some, I would say, that like for me, take some balls, obviously you don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, uh, and, and I have to admit, is that like I was not comfortable at the beginning you know, about it, just like I, uh, I try to, um, try to see, keep certain stuff like, like private, mm -hmm. uh, not to share with a bigger audience, but I understand that it was really there for, Others, I mean, the intention is really to help others to show, to share that Carol shared her story, 
to help others to also share their story, to understand that you can step out of uh, the, the not ideal situation that people might be in, or even if they manage to get out of it, but it's like they, that there is a, they can find a way to to find a way back to the initial core or to the and really lift themselves up and be a happy and live a happy life. I think that's that's what I associate with. So I for me rise is like yeah, it's really kudos to to do that you did that. Um, and glad that you help other ladies with this. It's, yeah. So respect. Oh wow, it's like a kissing like oh no. <laughs> Yeah. Well, since 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 you mentioned that, you know, I thought um, maybe I'll I will share. Um, you know, I've recently um, part is part of this amazing community, Women of Courage Asia, and uh, on the monthly basis on the Tuesday, last Tuesdays of every month, we will have this uh, monthly women empowerment uh, meeting. So um, I'm very very honored to be to be sharing my uh, my story publicly um basic i would say verbally for the very very first time because as philip had mentioned earlier i was i i put everything onto onto my book and to share and this is this is the platform i this is also one of the reasons why i do what i do because i i wanted to to give hope because i was i was really hopeless and and i was able to to get out of that and to have this lifestyle here, being married to my soulmate, and I have two amazing kids. Um, I'm just glad I, I I didn't I didn't make the choices that I made back then. So if you are if you are keen, you know, to want to find out a bit more, and I really would like you to to come and and, and join in for for this the Women and Power meeting at Women of Courage Asia on the thirtieth of June this month. Uh, it is it's an open invitation. I'll put the link onto the comments below. So for, for, for all the ladies, so if you can you know, register and it's, a, it's an opportunity for you to hear my story in full. Just thinking about it, you know, I'm getting nervous, but I also cheering up um, as well. So yes, that's all for tonight. Thank you so very much for joining us and hanging out with us this evening. So I hope we'll give you all the value. So if you have any other questions that you would like to PM me, you know, private message me, um, yeah, please, please do, please do. So that uh, you know, we're glad to actually answer your questions on, on this. So thank you for hanging out with us and uh, have a wonderful weekend. So this is Carol here signing off. Bye-bye. This is Philip. Good night. Good night. Thanks for being here. Bye.